Uh, hi, good evening. This is the September 12th, 2024 meeting of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'm Dave Herrer, Conservation Commission Chair. As a reminder, this meeting is being broadcast to the town's YouTube channel and via Zoom, and is being recorded for publication, later viewing, and administrative purposes. Uh, I'd like to first start out with a roll call of the members and staff. Um, Call your name, please respond. Sue? Here. Larry? Here. Reed? Here. Bill? Here. Um, Paulina? She's not here yet. And um, Chair is here. Deb? Here. And Clay? Here. And Fred is here. I don't know yep. if we hit Fred. Uh -huh. All right. Yep. Uh, okay. All supporting materials have been provided to the commission members and are available on the town website. Here are some ground rules for our meeting. I'll open and introduce each hearing on the agenda and then introduce the applicant and or, the, or their consultant to begin their pre presentation at the Conclusion of the applicant's presentation, I will call on the staff and then each commission member to provide their comments or questions. Please wait until your name is called. After comments and questions from the staff and commission, I'll solicit comments or questions from the public. Um, please wait until the chair yields before you and please state your name before speaking. Please mute your phone or computer while you are not speaking and Finally, each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted via roll call vote. Okay, so uh, the first item on the agenda is 17 George Agate Road DEP file 234-930. The applicant has submitted a new drawing as we requested. Um, Deb, I don't know if, if you've had a chance to do the uh, order of conditions. Um, no, I have not. Okay. Um, I guess I, I, you know, I look at the plan and look pretty straightforward what we asked for. Um, I don't, maybe if any of the commissioners uh, or the staff, um, have any questions, um, uh, on this, uh, please raise your hand. Otherwise, uh, we'll continue this to our next meeting and hopefully we'll have the order of conditions done at that time. Anybody anybody have any comment or question? No. Yep. Anything from you? No? Nothing from me. Yeah, I see Susan, you're here and uh, you know, appreciate you revising the plan. So I think I think we're good to go. We just need to uh, get the order of conditions prepared. So. Um just i i just had a quick question um so that tank you know is it's a proposed location it has not been moved yet um is there going to be a condition in the order that says by a certain date um it it must be relocated or something like that uh, i i believe that we agreed that we were going to um you know have the requirement to move the tank in the order but uh I don't think we talked about a date. I didn't, you know. Okay. I, I was just curious. I didn't make the last meeting, so. Yeah. I mean, no, uh, I don't know how much time the uh, contractor would need, but uh, I think we'd be flexible on a date. Okay. As long as it gets done. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, I have a motion to uh, continue this hearing. Uh, to uh, September 26th. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, let's vote. Fred. Aye. Uh, Bill. Aye. Clary. Aye. Sue. Aye. Uh, Reed. Aye. And uh, welcome, Paulina. Your vote. Looks like she's uh, adjusting audio. 
Okay, well, uh, chair votes aye. You hear us now, Polina? I do, thank you. Sorry, I was playing around with it, trying to get it. Oh no, we see you and hear you loud and clear. <laughs> so what's your vote? I'm sorry, I did not hear anything before that. Okay, we, vo we voted. Speaker or audio. <laughs> uh, the motion was to uh, continue the hearing for uh, 17 George Agate Road to the next meeting uh, because we don't have the order of conditions uh, ready. Okay, I motion to continue or yay. <laughs> All right, great. And it's your vote, size. So we're all. Thank you, Susan's. Okay, thank you. Good night. Right. Thank you. The next meeting is uh, 1490 Central Avenue, DEP file 234 931. And I think we're waiting to get some resolution to comments the state had. And uh, I didn't see any new information presented so I would presume we would continue this but do, do you have any comment um so Joyce Hastings is here um for this and for the next um hearing and she wanted a chance to um to present um tonight so that's just, a document. Just, yeah just just a brief presentation because I just like to get some of your feedback um we didn't get anything uh, relative to any new information. There is no new information. So okay. I'm I'm the not, any nothing that the uh, none of the comments that DEP presented would change my design. So I just wanted to again give a brief presentation so in an effort to try and resolve any of your issues and DEP before the next meeting. Oh. And I can just run through it quickly. Um DEP yeah, had some comments related to uh, the status of the what we were calling an intermittent stream that goes across the front of the property. On the USGS map, it shows it as a perennial stream, but it does not flow year round and it has not been flowing. Hey, what's the we... command to purge and delete layers that are frozen? Uh, you got to go upload APP. Can you put your phone on mute? Sorry. So, uh, okay, Joyce. So, yeah, you can, you know, give us a brief update. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, we've documented that the stream is intermittent, and we have uh, w waiting for DEP to review that. At the same time, they asked us to look at stream, uh, the stream uh, regulations as, with respect to stream crossings. Uh, but this is an existing crossing. Uh, we're doing the best we can to improve it, but we're not going to be able to meet all the requirements. And because it's existing, we're not required to meet all the requirements just to do the best we can. And those were the two DEP comments. Um, if I could just, again, I, I want to be brief, but I just want to make sure there's nothing extra that you might want. Um, so this, what we're doing out here, if I could, I'm sharing my screen. Sure. Uh, this is a, an existing house at 1490 uh, Central Ave. Um, it's got an existing driveway that runs down to the house. We have a little turnaround here, and we have a wetland edge that runs right along the edge of the driveway. The house was built in the 1960s, and the driveway is in very, it's in poor condition. And what's happened is as, you know, as time has gone on, it's created uh, low spots in the middle of the driveway and the pipe that runs under the driveway that connects that um, stream from one side to the other has, uh, it's collapsed and it's, uh, it's full. You can observe it on the far side. It's, it's a con 10 inch concrete pipe and it's all, it's in pieces as it exits. And there's nothing that goes through it. This spring when we had all those uh, very strong storms, what was happening is the water was bypassing the culvert and washing into the driveway and going across. So what they, they want to try and avoid that by, re, our goal is to replace this culvert with a, uh, a 10 inch plastic pipe in this area here of the same, uh, same volume and then providing an, an outlet at each end, 
shortening up this outlet so that we're not putting it, this is an exposed pipe all the way out into this area here. We don't feel that's necessary to get the, con the connection between these two edges. Um, and then the idea would be to remove the existing pavement and to repave the uh, length of the driveway, providing a, uh, a better, you know, improving the base of the driveway and putting it in its exact location. There'd be no expansion of the driveway. One of the, one of the uh, things that Deb had asked for is could we put in an infiltration trench? Um, and so it, there really isn't an opportunity to put it on this side of the driveway because it slopes down just as it gets past the edge of the driveway into the grass slopes down to the wetlands and there really isn't a strong enough strip. So we, this is the low area of the driveway here. So we propose to put in a two by two foot infiltration trench along this upper side of the driveway to help with infiltration um, as it comes off the driveway. And really that's the extent. Our only goal here is to replace the driveway and replace the culvert because again, it has failed and it's not functioning at all. And I didn't know if you might have any more comments. We've run erosion control down the entire length of the driveway on this side and uh, again on this side also. At the inlet and outlet of the culverts, we've just put a small uh, depression. This will be set, the culvert will be set at the same elevation as it is now, but we have like a little, uh, a little uh, flared end at the bottom. Um, just a little depression to help either slow things down. There isn't a lot of water coming out of here, but we didn't want the, we wanted to try and stop the plugging of the culvert again. So if there, if there was a way that we could uh, try and settle some of the material that's coming from upstream uh, before it has a chance to get blocked in the culvert. And this is a detail of the stone trench. Um, and we were proposing straw wattles and uh, silt fence for uh, the erosion control. And quick, as a brief overview, that's the that's it in a nutshell. Okay, uh, thanks, um, Deb. Do you have any further comment? No, I did meet Joyce out there. Um, I agree. DEP will find it to be an intermittent stream channel. Um, and uh, I think it's a pretty simple project. I don't think that there's any issues. And, um, you know, I did ask if they could put in that infiltration trench because I know that the mission has been looking for that when people are doing driveways. So glad that was um, integrated. Okay. Um, let's ask the commissioners if they have any uh, comments. I'll start with Sue. Sounds great. Okay, Larry, you're good. Reed, all good. Yeah, nothing for me. Thanks. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, I'm good. Fred, no uh, questions. Elena, no questions. <laughs> okay, it seems pretty pretty uh, straightforward to me as well. So uh, let's uh, continue this this hearing and, uh, you know, hopefully at the next meeting we can wrap this up. Um, Thank you. A motion to continue. Um, motion to continue. Second. Okay. Uh, let's vote. Sue? Um, aye. Clary? Aye. Re Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Alina? Aye. And the chair of both sides. Okay, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is uh, 333 Cartwright Road, so continued notice of intent. Um, I think we reviewed this and uh, everybody's comments were received. Uh, so I I don't know if we have the OOC the order of conditions ready, Deb. Ed, no. I've been I'm sorry I've yeah. been slammed. Um, but Joyce did you did update the plan right? I did. 
So, um, yeah, we had continued this comments. for a DEP file number and uh, for me to add wetland bonds onto the plan at the 25 um, and to um, sorry, and to note, so I've added uh, three wetland bounds on the 25 foot buffer zone. This is a, this was an open field back here uh, right. and the wetland extended into that open field and it has been mowed. So you had requested that we mark the edge of the 25 foot with wetland bounds and then overseed the, uh, the area that runs basically from the property line up to the 25 foot with a uh, conservation seed meadow mix and only mow it once a year. And that's, yep. I've reviewed that with the owner and uh, that was uh, more than acceptable. Okay. And I also added a bound detail on the second page. All right, any commissioner have, have any uh, further comment? Otherwise, uh, we'll continue to the next meeting. Can I have a motion to continue? Motion to continue. I second. Okay, uh, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Clary? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Paulina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, Thank you. The next item is uh, 898 South Street, DP file 234-934. Uh, this was continued. Uh, I believe that the applicant wants to continue this uh, further uh, to the next meeting or any specific date, Deb, do you know? Um, I, I didn't hear. I think um, they requested to the next meeting. Okay. So the next meeting uh, is the 26th. So kind of a motion to continue this. 898 South Street to the oh. meeting on the 26th of 2024. Motion, motion. to continue. Second. Okay. Uh, we'll vote. Sue? Aye. Clary? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Polina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, good. We're moving right along here. Um, the next item is 484 Charles River Street, DEP file 234-933. This was a request for an abbreviated notice of uh, resource area delineation. If I recall, everybody was good with that, uh, but they didn't have a DEP file number. And, <clears throat> Correct. Uh, yep, uh, they have one now. Yeah, so my que question for you, Deb, is do we just close the hearing and, or do, and vote on whether to uh, accept it or is there- Yeah, any, to issue it, the ORAD. Okay, so we have to issue some paperwork for that. Yep. But we, yeah, but the we order of resource area delineation is what you're issuing. Do we have to review that? No. Okay. It's just simply stating that um, we agree with the with the delineations, the bordering vegetated wetland, um, two isolated wetlands, and the riverfront area. Okay. So we have have to close the hearing first, and then. Yep. Okay, so um, I have a motion to close the hearing for 484 Charles Street, uh, DEP file 234-933. So moved. Second. Okay, uh, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Larry? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Fred? Sorry, uh, aye. Melina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, so the next item would be to uh, have a motion to accept the uh, ANRAD for 484 Charles River Street. Um, so to issue the ORAD. Yeah. 
Okay, I move that we issued the ORAD for 484 Charles Service Street, DEP file 234-933. Second. Okay, let's vote. Darrell Sue. Aye. Larry. Aye. Reed. Aye. Bill. Aye. Fred. Aye. Elena. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, so that takes care of old business. Now let's move on to the new items here. Um, the first is 731 South Street, request for determination of applicability. And this is for a, uh, a, a small addition. So do we have anybody from the uh, applicant that wants to? Uh, yes, I'm here. Huh. Well, this, what we're doing is is uh, um, in order to provide some handicap uh, design accommodation, we're expanding a half bath on the first floor uh, adjacent to the house. All the construction will be exterior to the building envelope. Um, and uh, possibility of also within that footprint putting in an elevator that would go through of the first floor to the second floor. It's very straightforward. Um, uh, David Mac Macklow's also on the line, I believe. Uh, yeah. the technical uh, issues. I, I'm here. I just uh, tried to share my screen. I don't know if it's up. I seem to have lost my video, but is the audio working? Yes. yes. We see the we see the uh, plan. Okay. With the Great. with the little additions I got, colored in. I yellow. got the video working again too. So thank you, Budge. Um, you know, as uh, stated in the uh, in the cover letter for the for the um, RDA, we're asking for an RDA with conditions um, as needed to um, expedite the construction of a ADA uh, bathroom at the home. Okay, seems straightforward. Uh, Deb, do you have any comments or thoughts? No, it is. It's it is definitely straightforward. Um, yeah. It's within already disturbed area. They don't have to remove any trees. Um, so I'm. I think you should issue a negative determination. Okay. Um, let me ask any of the commissioners if uh, they have any questions to uh, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, is there anybody? I, I I don't think there's anybody in the public, but there there are no hands raised in the public. Okay, so uh, so we should we should close the hearing and then vote on the negative determination. Yep. All right. We got Sue. Sue's got her hand up. Hey, I, sorry, I, I do have a little question. Um, the elevator that you mentioned, um, if you did put an elevator in, it would be within the same footprint as the, as the expanded bath, uh, bathroom? Well, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's so, all. So we close the hearing and then vote mm -hmm. on the determination? Okay. Yep. So can I have a motion to close the hearing for 731 South Street? There's no problem. <clears throat> Motion. Second. Okay, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Larry? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Alina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, so now uh, we need a motion to issue a negative determination of applicability for 731 South Street. So moved. Second. Okay. Let's vote. Sue? Aye. Larry? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Helena? Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Great. Good luck with your project. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Next item is. Uh, 54 Pleasant Landing Road. 
And this is another uh, request for determination of applicability. And who do we have from the applicant? Good evening. This is Bruce Ringwall from Goldsmith Press and Ringwall representing uh, the Terrans. Hey, welcome. Um, share my screen here. Uh, the property is located at uh, 54 Pleasant Landing Road. Um, we've been before you not too long ago to add a garage in uh, an area of pavement, and that has been done. Uh, now we're looking to um, do some work between the, the existing house garage and the pool. And screen in here, zoom, zoom in just a little bit. Sorry, I didn't get the uh, colored version on my uh, thumb drive when I came home this evening. I apologize. Um, but the, this is the same wetland line that uh, we've used at the last couple filings on this property. Uh, this is an existing pool. Uh, there's an existing fence out here and landscaping. Uh, there's an existing, behind the existing garage is an existing patio with a trellis over it, a pergola type of feature over the top of it. Um, the applicant is planning to would like to remove the pergola and the uh, the patio area and install a screened in porch. They would have steps coming down over here. Um, we're proposing uh, erosion control from the, uh, the pool deck over to the pavement of the driveway. Uh, this is how they would access to do the work and all the work would be contained outside of this of the uh, 50 foot zone um, and most of it is within an existing footprint of the patio. There's a little bit on the outside here and here, which totals to a little over 100 square feet of lawn area that would be converted into um, into a screened in porch. Okay, but again, seems uh, straightforward. Um, may I ask, Deb, do you have any? Any comments? Um, I guess the only thing um, when I went to do the site visits, the um, the pergola and the um, patio have been removed already. So um, the patio is removed. I knew they're taking down the pergola. Is he taking the patio out already too? I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, but which is fine. It's all within disturbed area adjacent to the pool in between the house and the pool. It's a pretty straightforward project. So okay. Um again, I'll I'll just ask the any of the commissioners if you have any questions or comments, just raise your hand. Um, uh, Fred. Uh yes, is there any change from uh Pervious to impervious surface in this uh, this work. Yes, a, a little over a hundred square feet, sir. Um, was the existing patio um, uh, impervious also? No, it was a, a, a bluestone type patio. If memory serves me correctly. Okay. Okay, so a hundred square foot foot uh, addition uh, additional um, impervious surface. That's correct. Okay. What does that mean? Anybody else? Any other commissioners? No? Um, I don't have any comments. <clears throat> Looks straightforward. Um, so uh, if that's the case, um, do we we don't have an order of conditions yet, right? It's a um it's a negative determination of applicability. Oh it is. Okay, that's okay. So let's uh let's close the hearing here. And I have a motion to close the hearing for seven, I'm sorry, uh, 54 Pleasant Landing Road. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, okay, let's vote. Sue? Um, aye. Larry? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Lena? Aye. The chair votes aye. Okay, so now we'll uh, let's have a motion 
to issue a uh, negative determination of applicability for 54 Pleasant Landing Road. 54 Pleasant Landing Road. Motion. Second. Okay, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Clary? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Alina? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time, folks. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good. Uh, next item is 54 Pleasant Landing Road. No, we did that, right? I'm getting confused again. We did. 67? Yeah. 67, yeah. 67 oh, Heather. 67 Heather Lane. Uh, they don't have a DEP file number yet. Um, they did just get one today. Okay. Uh, so it's 234-935. Okay. And who do we have? Uh, Mary? Yes. Okay. Do you have a little presentation? A little, little speech. Sure. Yeah. Um, Deb, can you put the plan up on the screen? I can't, but Clay can. Okay. If Clay could do it, that'd be great because I can't do it either. Yeah, just a moment. You can okay. go ahead, but I'll pull it up momentarily. I'll start talking. Okay, this property is a single family house lot located on the north side of Heather Lane. Um, Heather Lane is this wonderful cul-de-sac that the lots on the south side of the street back on the Charles River and the lots on the north side um, are primarily upland. This lot itself does not contain any wetland areas, but it is within 100 feet of offsite wetlands located on an adjacent property. If you are familiar with this street, this is the house lot um, that predates all of the new big homes. You'll see on the site plan in front of you that at the um, right hand side of the drawing, there's a small house shown that is the existing house that is on this property today. Um, there's an expansive driveway system. It comes in off of Heather Lane and um, goes all the way to the back of the lot and has two parking areas like parking services um, included on it. Uh, the wetlands that are off site of this lot are bordering vegetated wetlands. And I believe they're associated with ponds that are located to the north and the east. Um, when you look at the wetland, it looks like a round depression, but there is an inlet stream coming in from the north. It was dry at the time of my site visit, um, but it very clearly is a healthy bordering vegetated wetland with um, a connection to other water resources in the town. The application that we filed with you tonight is a notice of intent and what my client would like to do is to remove the existing house and all of the existing pavement within the jurisdictional buffer zone to the wetland. Um, the house lies on the 100 foot zone with about half of it within the wetland area, half of it within a non-jurisdictional area. Um, but we would like to take down the entire house, demolish it, remove the paved areas and restore the disturbed surfaces with a native seed mix. Um, this would restore basically um, the, the 50 foot buffer zone, which is the area noted at the property line, as well as um, the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. You will notice that there is another house shown on this property. We are not asking you to review this house this time. And in fact, this may not be a house that ends up being put on the spot. What we were trying to show you was that if we had to, we could put a single family house on this lot in a non-jurisdictional area. Um, and, and that was really the point of showing this footprint. We, this will be a spec house, the footprint may change, um, but we believe that putting the house further towards the street is the better solution on this property and removing the existing house and pavement within the 100 foot buffer zone and restoring it to a vegetated con condition um, is really where we should be planning at this point in time. 
We also gave you um, an abbreviated plant list showing woody plantings planted in the 50 foot buffer zone, which falls onto this site. It's like a half moon shaped area. So with the planting of these woody vegetations, the 50 foot buffer zone would be fully restored. Are there questions from the commission? Well, that, that's great. Just, we like to see projects mm -hmm. like this. Um, so uh, Deb, do you have any comment? No um, negatives, no negatives. All right, any, any commissioners, any comments? Raise your hands. That's great. Yeah, I don't have a comment, but I was just curious about the wetland line, uh, what was going on over there at the last flag, I think flag number eight, it kind of turned back in. It, it shouldn't. It, I think the surveyor flipped his numbers and it should go straight, um, nor it should go northerly. You can, instead he sent it sort of southerly, but it should go northerly so that it's like a, a U. Mm -hmm. And I did review the line on on the site so um it isn't accurate on the plan yeah he was supposed to correct it but um obviously that didn't happen okay sue you have a comment just a quick question um so the the new house would be outside the 50 foot near the at, street at this point our plan is to create a footprint for a new house in a non-jurisdictional area that is outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, okay. Truthfully, we have the room to even put in a pool and landscaping without going near the 100 foot buffer zone, um, but we don't have a, a site plan yet. We just want to show you that there could be development on this lot that didn't come into your jurisdiction. Oh, okay. Uh, but but you'll be restoring uh, within the 50 foot and back uh, with- Of course, yeah. Yeah, we're going to take out the existing house, take out the existing extra parking. There's huge paved areas back there and restore it to a grass condition. Thank you. Okay. Great. So we're going to have to continue this hearing until we get the order of condition. Yeah, we do have a file number, as Deb said, it's 935. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can I have a motion to... Uh, Continue this hearing to our next meeting, September 26, 2024. Motion to continue. Second. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Sue? Aye. Larry? Aye. Reed? Aye. Uh, Fred? Aye. Bill? Aye. Alina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, and thank you, Clay, for putting up the plan. Okay, now what you've all been waiting for is our mm -hmm. uh, uh, infamous uh, chair of the Needham Housing Authority Board, Mr. And, Red. Uh, Dave, it'll just take me a quick moment to pull over the, the other members of this presentation. We had enough panelists tonight that I did request this hearing to come in as attendees, so if you just give me a moment. Yeah, well, I'm just introducing Reg here. Um, so uh, I think I'm notorious, not infamous, but yeah, no, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to correct the chair in, on a public record here. So the, the Needham Housing Authority has done a lot of work to advance this project, and you know they're getting, you know, towards the point where they can uh, submit their application for. Uh, funding or for whatever grants and whatever they need. Uh, I think next week you go to the planning board and uh, they wanted to get uh, some uh, feedback input from the uh, Conservation Commission regarding this project. Uh, they have been in front of the Conservation Commission, um, I think three times or maybe four times uh, over the past uh, year and a half or so. So uh, those of you that have, have been on, the commission will probably see, you know, a project familiar, but we have some new members as well. So turn it over to you, Reg, and your team. Great. I'm just looking at the attendees list to see if there's anybody uh, we've left behind. Um, Dan, if you could like unmute yourself, let's see, you have Betsy. Uh, we don't have Mike Mattis. I don't see him in the attendee list here, but we can start without him. Um, and um, 
logistically, Clay, are you going to uh, be using the doing the uh, presentation uh, graphics? You're doing the screen share. Uh, that is up to you and your team. I, I can do the screen share once I. Dan, do you want it? Uh, you you got see if your screen share works here. I guess I can I, I can share my screen. Okay, great. Also, you could promote Tony Donato as well. He's a civil engineer. Oh, right. Uh, and Chelsea Davison. Yeah, uh, thank you. Is Curtis coming this evening? Uh, Curtis should be here. Uh, I don't see him on the attendees. We weren't intent uh, anticipating you getting quite through that long list quite as fast as you did, but he'll be here uh, shortly, yeah. and we can get begin begin uh, with some introductions here, um, and um, maybe somebody could send Curtis a text message to say we're about fifteen minutes ahead of schedule, twenty minutes. Yep. Uh, and also, I think Brad uh, is on my office. Brad McCourt, you could promote him as well. Says Brad there. So let me start sharing here. Let me know if you can't see the screen. Looks great. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rich, it's all yours. Super. <clears throat> um, I'm Reg Foster. I'm chair of the Needham Housing Authority. As uh, Dave introduced, um, this is our fourth or fifth time we've bef been before the uh, commission since uh, I, I spring of 2023. However, this is the first official time we've uh, put in a uh, notice of intent, uh, hopefully you've all received and had a chance to take a look at. Um, and I'd like to start with introductions here. Um, if we could go to the next slide, Dan, or did we take that slide out? Yeah, there it is. Um, so, um, I'm going to let, um, I think everybody is familiar with the Needham Housing Authority, so I'm not going to take too much time there, given the lateness of the hour. However, um, we have uh, a new development. Um, as I think many of us know, we put uh, a RFP out in um, late June for a developer partner, and we received three great proposals. Uh, we had a proposal evaluation committee working uh, the entire month of August, uh, weighing uh, um, all the uh, proposals against the uh, evaluation criteria and determining um, which uh, of the respondents was most advantageous for the Needham Housing Authority in the town of Needham. And um, last Thursday, the 5th of September, the evaluation committee presented their evaluation report and the recommendation to the full Needham Housing Authority board um, and unanimously recommended um, the team of Peabody, uh, HSC Peabody Development uh, in uh, LLC as the most advantageous, advantageous developer um, for the project. And the uh, Needham Housing Authority board, um, after talking about it for an hour and asking a lot of questions, did uh, award the engagement unanimously to this team. This evening, we uh, have with us, I know we have Betsy Collins of Peabody Properties. And uh, do we have, um, I don't see Mike Mattis of AHSC, but maybe uh, Betsy, you could take a minute to uh, introduce your firm in AHSC, which stands for Affordable Housing Services Collaborative, and uh, talk a little bit about um, your background and experience in developing affordable housing here in the Commonwealth. Sure, um, and Mike has joined. Um, yeah. I'm, I Why am- uh, Take the slide down for a minute here, and then sure. we don't have to look at it, um, Stan, and while we're making the introductions here. Sure. Um, I'm Betsy Collins, and I am the Vice President of Development with PVD Properties. Um, PVD Properties was founded in 1976 as a property management company um, to support 
um, Edward A. Fish's um, development and construction um, 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 organizations. Um, we currently um, manage about 16,000 units, and I would say 14 to 15,000 of them are all in Massachusetts. Most, 90% of that portfolio is affordable housing. So we have a lot of experience with affordable housing and a great number of those units are senior um, housing units, which um, or makes us very excited to be involved in the Linden Street project. Um, I'm gonna let Mike just introduce Affordable, which is our co-development partner. And um, like I said, we're very excited about being chosen to be a development partner with the Housing Authority and um, joining this great team. Thanks, ben, Betsy, and thanks for everyone for having us tonight. Um, so as Betsy mentioned, I'm Mike Maddow, I'm the Executive Director of Affordable Housing and Services Collaborative. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to create and preserve affordable housing. We were actually founded by uh, Edward A. Fish uh, as well in 2001. So although we are um, strategically related to Peabody, we are not legally affiliated, um, but we do joint venture and partner with Peabody on lots of developments. We've done um, over 19, almost, uh, well, now this was the 20th uh, project together over the last uh two decades. And um, so we're excited to be working with the Needham Housing Authority on this project and um, happy to answer any questions folks may have, but um, thank you again. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. And um, commissioners, I will say uh, this is marks the end of day five on the job by the AHSC <laughs> Peabody team. So they're still <clears throat> working their way um, down the learning curve or up the, I forget which way you go on a learning curve, but they're on it. Um, but um, one of, uh, we're, not only are we delighted to have them for all the uh, highly advantageous elements of their proposal, uh, but one in particular was they took a look at what we have been um, doing for the last couple of years and um, also at the uh, work of Dan Chen and his team uh, on the schematic design that you reviewed, uh, you know, in several steps over the last 15, 18 months. And so they um, uh, uh, joined forces with Dan. So Dan Chen and the BHNA team you're about to hear from will be continuing to support this project. And there'll be just uh, not only a seamless tra transition, but no transition needed whatsoever, either for here for the uh, Conservation Commission or for the planning board and slight correction to what uh, Dave said or um, Debbie said, um, the uh, site plan review public hearing opens on Tuesday, the 24th of September. And of course, we're all familiar that the planning board solicits um, comment and input and recommendations from all the important bo boards and committees and commissions and town departments and so forth and so on. And that's all been a work in progress um, since uh, since last month. We've uh, received a sign off from the fire department, from the building commissioner, um, uh, sign off from the police department with some caveats. Um, and um, <clears throat> uh, very, very pleased uh, with the, the support at the town. I'm going to now turn um, uh, the meeting over to Dan Chen to introduce his team here again, those of you who haven't met them, met um, some of them and some of them you have met. And, and then we're gonna proceed with a presentation of the project for the public hearing uh, in case there's any public comment that we're gonna be getting and go, go for it, Dan, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, my name is Dan Chen. I was, I'll be sharing my screen uh, for tonight. And before I start, I can ask Clay to uh, promote Curtis Puncher from Ground. He's the uh, landscape architect on the team. Um, so for tonight, we, we will be going through uh, several slides. Uh, we'll first provide a very quick project overview introduction, which you just heard. Uh, and then, well, uh, uh, introduction of the project and then i'll hand it off to uh to uh, epsilon associates who are our wetland consultant 
for the notice of intent application that you have in front of you. Uh, Tony uh, Donato from Hancock Associates, who is a civil engineer, will talk about utility and stormwater. And then Curtis Puncher from Ground Inc., who is the landscape architect, will provide you an overview of the, uh, the current landscape design. And then we'll take questions and comments from, from you and the public. So with that, uh, with that, I'll I'll start uh, quickly our timeline. As you as you know, we started this project last year, January 2023. Uh, we've been in front of you twice, I believe. Um, and uh, for today, I, we have filed, as you know, we have filed the cycling review submission back uh, last month, uh, late last month. And now we're going to the Conservation Commission hearing for notice of, notice of intent. And the upcoming planning board hearing will be on September 24th, which is in two weeks. Um, existing Linden's community, uh, this is long, uh, high, opposite High Rock Middle School. Um, there's a total of 72 units in the Linden Street development. Here you see uh, 18 single story buildings. Each has four units uh, in these buildings. Um, and the project that we are uh, looking at in terms of the proposal will be uh, to propose taking down these 18 buildings and propose a uh, two buildings um, in, in this place. And the part that you see here in yellow are the chambers buildings. There's 80 units, two stories in that in that project. And we are at this point are, are not uh, touching up those projects right now. Um, in the building that we'll be proposing, phase 1A will contain 76 units, and that you see here. Um, and, and we'll have uh, 72 one bedrooms and four two bedroom units. And you have all this information in front of the, uh, uh, I, I think you have seen this before in the site plan review uh, application as well. And phase 1B will have 60 units. Uh, and and that's to the uh, south of the site. And and finally, with the both buildings are complete, we'll have a total of 136 new units. And what's in uh, in front along Linden Street is parking. We'll have 70 parking spaces, drop off, and then uh, these areas that you see here are the fire lanes that is uh, coordinated with the fire department for firefighting. Um, I'll, I'll sh these are two aerial renderings that, that you see here. Uh, the orange view, this is Linden Street, um, and this is Sylvan Road up here. Back here is the Maple Street neighborhood. And then the wetland area that we'll be uh, looking at specifically is along this part of the site, um, on the uh, eastern part of the site. Here is another aerial view uh, looking above High Rock Middle School. Here you see Linden Street in front, uh, Maple Street neighborhood behind, um, and uh, the proposed buildings here. The remaining uh, Chamber Street building, uh, the five Chamber Street building, and the, and the current community uh, room building uh, remain intact in this area. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand this over to uh, Greg and Chelsea at uh, Epsilon Associates is the one I'm consulting. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, good evening, everyone. For the record, Greg Hockmith from Epsilon Associates. Here with me tonight is Chelsea Davidson. We're the uh, project wetland scientists. Uh, on March 17th, 2023, Epsilon delineated the jurisdictional resource areas on the property. Uh, we'll go over those when we get to the existing condition plan. But essentially, we were we were tasked with putting together no, the notice of intent. Um, a lot of the heavy lifting was done even before we got involved. Um, it looks like efforts were made to uh, not only comply with the Wetlands Protection Act regulations, but to also comply with the Needham Wetlands Bylaw, which made our job somewhat easier. Uh, the project was designed to avoid alterations to uh, any wetland resource area both local and state jurisdictional. Um, it will result in a decrease in impervious surface. Uh, portions of the property in the existing condition have structures and alterations in the 25 foot buffer. Uh, post construction, those structures would be removed and all new structures would be pulled outside of that 25 foot buffer. Um, 
areas that are currently um, maintained and uh, containing buildings in the 25 will be reestablished with native vegetation, uh, which Curtis will talk about uh, down the road. And, uh, let's see, it looks like we're getting a couple. Okay, there we go. Looks like we're seeing your other screen there, Dan. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I'm seeing a couple of screens. It's um, were we still on the uh, bullet point slide? I'm sorry. Let me let me re redo this. My apologies. Sure. We need to back up one. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Um, so no construction other than restoration proposed within 25 feet of bank and BVW. Those are our two resource areas here that we're going to talk about. And then ultimately an increase in open space. Uh, next slide, please. So just real quickly, uh, I think everybody's familiar with the property, but if you haven't walked out back in the woods, you may not know what the jurisdictional resource areas are. Um, there's a BVW to the bottom right. That's the A series, which is shown in green. And then there's that blue line that you see connecting to the other green uh, area, which is the B series BVW. Uh, that line in between the two is what looks like a mechanically dug ditch that's concrete and stone lined. It was probably a drainage feature back when it was constructed, but it's jurisdictional today. It is defined as inland bank and it would have a buffer both under the act and the bylaw. And then there's another intermittent stream shown in blue um, on the other side of the B series. And that's heading into uh, the area that's not currently part of the Notice of Intent application. Um, we've got another uh, jurisdictional intermittent stream uh, to the left where the pointer was. And then we've got the D series IVW, which is behind uh, home plate in the baseball diamond that you see at the top of the screen. So a good chunk of the property is within the commission's jurisdiction. Um, it looks like for the most part, there's approximately a 25 foot variable width, no cut, no disturb in existence today, other than the encroachments that I talked about earlier. So that was a big bonus for this project to reestablish that 25. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just uh, the, the survey plan showing the survey located resource areas. Uh, the last graphic um, was not as precise as this graphic. Uh, these were located by survey and the uh, maroon line or the purplish line that you see there, that's the 25 foot buffer. The yellow line is the 50 and the green line is the 100. So as I mentioned before, a good chunk of this is within the commission's jurisdiction. Um, but other than the 25, most of it is currently maintained buildings or pavement. Uh, next slide, please. So these are just some highlights of uh, the existing encroachments. And it, it says wetlands encroachments, but those are really just buffer zone encroachments. There are no wetland encroachments. Uh, and where it says 25 foot BVW, uh, that's the 25 foot buffer. Uh, but as you can see, there's 1,605 square feet uh, in the 25 and 50, uh, 16,050 square feet in the 50 for the entire site. Linden is 395 and, and 7950 respectively. And those are highlighted in the uh, reddish color that you see on the bottom of the screen. Next slide, please. This is the post-construction condition. Um, you can see there's a, a Pretty large reduction in the 25 and almost a 10% reduction in the 50. Uh, any reduction is good. Uh, but for Linden, it's it's 100% because we are pulling all activities outside the 25 and then a 19.7 for the Linden Street project, respectively. For the 50, uh, overall improvement. Things are getting further away, more of a vegetated buffer, uh, all good things. Next slide, please. So Tony's gonna to talk a lot about the drainage design here, but I will highlight some of the, uh, some of the positives here real briefly. Uh, we talked about the decrease in impervious surfaces. Uh, 
one thing that's not easy to see on the plan, but it's there is the concrete walkway behind the building is going to have an infiltration trench along it. So there is some impervious, but it's going to be mitigated by an uh, infiltration trench. The pavers that you see on the back of the building are going to be permeable. So a lot of thought went into this to try to decrease the amount of, of impervious post-construction. And again, ultimately just highlighting that we're going to be further away. Next slide, please. These are some photos, uh, if you haven't been to the site, showing the jurisdictional wetland resource areas. We hate to rate wetlands because they are all treated the same, uh, but these wetlands, uh, they're not pristine. Uh, so giving them a little bit more of a buffer would be a good thing. Uh, that's that stone line channel that I talked about earlier that carries the intermittent stream. Um, and there's the other one there. Uh, the wetlands are fairly obvious. The edge was abrupt, a strong uh, change in hydric soils versus upland soils, as well as, as vegetation. Not difficult to delineate. Uh, next slide. These are just some photos. The top right shows one of the outfalls. And again, that stone line channel. Um, and then I think the bottom right is just uh, the isolated wetland that was uh, delineated as the, uh, the D series. Next slide. This is the site. Uh, where you see those cones, uh, the, the wooded area uh, is roughly where the existing 25 is. So uh, that current walkway is very close to the 25. Uh, most of the site looks very similar to these photos that you see. There's, there's 18 buildings, four units each paved walkways connecting the two, paved walkways weaving between them, them all. There is a maintenance building, uh, lots of pavement, lots of maintained lawn. Next slide. So I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Tony Donato to talk a little bit about the stormwater uh, management. Thank you, Greg. And for the record, my name is Andy Donato. I am an engineer with um, Hancock Associates. And this slide is just a summary of um, our design parameters, which are um, comply with the um, stormwater bylaw that's um, for the town, uh, specifically that we are providing uh, at least one inch of recharge for the uh, amount equivalent of the total area of a proposed impervious uh, for phase one. Stormwater calculations for the 210, 25-year, 100-year storm events using the uh, NOAA uh, design storm rates. Um, the project will result in both a reduction in the rate and volume of stormwater runoff from the site for each of the storm events. The project provides 80% total suspended solid removal and 50% phosphorus removal. Um, and the site will incorporate um, uh, many new best management practices um, to the stormwater system that currently don't exist on the site. So uh, Dan, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so this is just the phasing plan and, you know, just to summarize what Dan had said, phase 1A includes the um, construction of the central access roundabout, um, 41 parking spaces to the north of the roundabout and partial the north end of the building, including the main entrance. Um, Dan, if you can go to the next slide, please. The demo and erosion control plan, uh, measures will be taken um, during construction to uh, minimize sediment and erosion from the site. Um, methods that will be utilized are the installation of a uh, crushed stone filter berm for uh, construction vehicle access, uh, the installation of staked uh, wattles um, along the edge of the site at the far east end of the site, um, catch basin and lake prote protection for all the structures that are located on the site and along Linden Street. And um, there will also be a um, operation and maintenance plan uh, developed uh, for the contractor to use during construction. Next slide, please, Dan. Um, this is the uh, site layout materials and then Dan had mentioned um, the final site includes a, uh, for phase one, includes a four-story building with parking for 70 vehicles. Um, a reduction in the amount of overall imperviousness within the project limits. The site will incorporate 
as I stated, several best management practices included groundwater recharge, installation of catch basins with deep sumps and gas traps, and the inclusion of also a long-term operation and maintenance plan. Um, Dan, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, this is the grade and drainage plan and um, parking lot in the roof water um, will be collected and directed to two recharge systems proposed uh, within the parking lot. One uh, in front of the main entrance of the building and another system located at the north end of the um, parking lot. The recharge systems will be consisted of high density polyethylene arched um, chamber systems surrounded by um, wash crushed stone. Uh, the fire lanes on either side will be permeable. Um, there will be a um, perforated pipe system located underneath the permeable pavers that will connect into the uh, recharge system um, to collect uh, any runoff that um, in the event of a large storm event that the, um, the uh, permeable pavers are over, um, the capacities are exceeded will be collected by the pipes and then discharged to the recharge system. Um, Site utilities. Um, so, as I mentioned, all utilities will be coming from Linden Street, um, will be a drainage connection, sewer, and electric, um, all from uh, Linden Street. And uh, that's the, yeah, the last slide. Thank you. And I don't know if you want me to talk about this, Dan, but this is just an example of the, uh, that was the example of the, per the pervious pavement, um, typical expectations where on this example, the, the parking lot spaces are um, pervious and the main access trials are impervious. And as you can see that the water is um, recharged into the ground. Great, thanks. Thanks, Tony. Uh, now I'll hand this over to uh, Curtis from uh, Ground Sink, the landscape architect. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to walk through, you know, the sort of landscape. Um, but I, I think we'll, we'll go through the next few slides. Um, and then if folks are interested, we can, we can always return to sort of site walk. Um, I'll get to the trees and the planting, um, which I think is, is what we're most interested in here. Um, so this diagram shows, uh, in red, the trees slated for removal in green existing trees that we'd like to keep and in blue uh, newly planted trees. Um, I do have the 25 foot boundary in magenta and in dark blue the 100 foot uh, buffer zone. Uh, apologies I don't have the 50 on there. Um, so trees to uh, be retained are eight uh, 24 to be removed and 80 new trees to be planted. Next. Um, so this is just the proposed removals and trees to be retained. Um, there's only one tree that was surveyed by our arborist um, that is within the 25 foot boundary. There's there's a lot more in that tree line, but there's one that's sort of in the site um, and that's gonna be retained. Um, there are 12 trees within the 100 foot buffer zone um, and it's kind of 50-50 there. So um, six are slated for removal, but five of those are due to either poor health or it's, um, an invasive species, Norway maple, namely. Um, and 17 of the 24 trees, 71% that we are proposing to remove are either in decline or are invasive species. Uh, next. Um, so this is that same information, but just in chart form. Um, so it's, it's all those trees that are numbered um, their size, species, um, sort of the health concerns lifted, listed on the right. Uh, the, the grays are removals, the whites are the ones we're keeping, and then there's a couple columns there for um, those that fall within the, the buffer zones. Uh, next. 
And so here's the proposed condition. So the, in again, in green, the trees that are being preserved and then overlaid on those um, trees that are uh, new planting. Um, so over 50% of those will be uh, canopy trees um, planted at somewhere between three and five inch caliper. Um, we don't have a definitive tree or plant list yet, but I can say that 100% um, of those canopy trees will be native. Um, the sm the, so, so those are the larger circles. The smaller circles uh, without the lines in them, those are understory trees. So you can see some of those sneak in close to the building, uh, maybe close to those canopy trees or underneath on the right. You can see we're sneaking some in underneath a mature honey locust there. So to get some understory going. Uh, in that north area. And then along the back, um, we do want to buffer this um, development from the, the folks on Maple Street. We know there's concerns over there. Um, um, so those are coniferous trees um, to try and get, you know, that sort of um, privacy, privacy plantings. Um, so there's 25 of those. Um, I won't get into too much, go into the weeds too much here on the planting pallets, um, but to say, I think the two that are most uh, relevant for this discussion as the, the north, what we're calling the north garden and the buffer zone. So just in brief, the north garden, that's going to be sort of sunny. Um, that's a sort of an amenity area for residents. There's seating, uh, there's a mix of maintained lawn and, and lots of planting. Um, so we do want to, we do want to sort of emphasize the ornamentals there. Um, it is biased heavily on natives. We will see a slide, uh, soon on that. Um, there's another palette for the Linden and the building frontage. And then there's a third palette for the buffer zone, which will be 100% um, native and more shade tolerant because because of the, the tree canopy on one side and the building on the other. Um, I will note that this rendering is a little deceiving. It is not lawn in between the wetland and that path. That should all be dark green on there. That's just a sort of rendering glitch that we haven't corrected. So um, don't please don't think that's all lawn in there. That's all going to be native planting. Um, yeah, so this is just, uh, again, we haven't placed individual plants, but we are working from pallets. So this is the buffer zone. So again, it's more sort of shade tolerant, uh, a mix of um, woody shrubs and uh, ground covers. Um, and ones that, you know, we are sort of ones that may like to get their feet wet. Um, and then some you know, some, some smaller understory trees. Uh, go ahead, Dan. And then, and then this is the Northern garden, um, again, biased towards natives, um, uh, more, more sun loving, um, palette there, some more color, um, to sort of get that cross between native pollinator and English garden sort of feel that we're going for, um, and, and again, we're sort of going to bring a lot more trees into that space, um, between, between that area and neighbors to the North, but we do want to keep sort of an open lawn area there, um, for residents. And I, I believe that's my last slide. Great. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. I'll hand that back to the commissioner for questions and comments. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So that was a great presentation. And um, yeah, let, let's go to uh, first, I'll ask Deb if she has any uh, general comments or questions. Um, I had a question as far as the filing fees go. Um, you have it down as being exempt. Is that, why is it exempt? Um, I might have misled somebody. Um, I know that um, uh, we're, I think, exempt from building permit fees. Um, I actually do not know whether that applies uh, 
it's a town policy for municipal projects. I don't know if that applies to filing fees for this particular situation. Okay. Um, do you want me to look into that? or Yeah, we should look into, um, you know, look into it with Bob Smart and Chris or whoever is the appropriate person, Chris Heap. Um, All right. I think as far as the planning department, didn't you guys ask them to waive the fees? We did, yes. Okay. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be the same situation with us, but um, I'll try to find out the answer to that. Um. I know um, Tom Ryder, the town engineer, mentioned that he had just gotten the stormwater plans potentially today. Um, so I know that he has his review to do. Um, I was wondering if there's any chance that the isolated wetland could be a vernal pool. So good, good question. So we were out there at a good time. We were out there in March of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see any evidence and we, we did look. Um, it's not shown as a potential vernal pool. It's not shown as a certified vernal pool by Heritage, but we looked anyways, and we didn't see any evidence that it was functioning as a vernal pool last spring. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had. Okay. Um, I'll go down the list of our commissioners. So I've been going alphabetically, so I'll continue with that. Uh, Sue? Yeah, two questions. Um, one is, I know you had mentioned uh, with the uh, the Linden Street side um, that all activities would be outside the 25 foot. The chamber, is that true of the Chamber Street um, uh, area also? So the uh, Chamber Street is um, is not being done at this side time. So the application well, before that you... And before the planning board is just for the Linden Street side. Okay, so this is like phase one. Is that yes. is that correct? Yes, gotcha. that's right. Okay. And second question is for the plantings. Um uh I just want to be sure and and I know um uh it was mentioned that, that there would be some shrubs, but I, I just I think uh, diversity, diversity is really uh, uh really important. And um, so I know 80 trees, uh, 24 trees were planned to be removed and I think it was mentioned 80 to be planted, um, but there would be shrubs among that too for, for some diversity. Was... Yeah, was absolutely. Yeah, all the, all the sort of dark green areas that were in the plan um, would be probably 50-50 shrubs and perennials. Um, okay. Perennials okay. slash grasses. Um, and and then that, um, face. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. This is this is a better plan to look at here. So the dark, the light green, except for the light green behind the building, um, that's proposed to be lawn, and then the dark areas are um, shrubs and perennials. Super. It's it's a wonderful plan. Uh, it, it's amazing. Um, but uh, so phase two will be uh, the chamber's uh, side. Is that correct? And that yes. comes later? Yes. yes. Okay. It's a funding thing. There's uh, the, the money isn't there. And this is a huge project just to do this. This I, uh, I know. It's a ama amazing effort that everyone's that you all that you put into this reg is amazing. Um, and um, so so I guess this NOI is is really for phase this is for phase one with the Linden Street, or does it include the whole, it covers the whole plan? This particular no, NOI right NOI now. Just, yeah, this, general, this NOI just covers the Linden Street. We'll have to come back with a new NOI for okay. uh, phase two. Okay, it's amazing. I'm done. Okay, thanks to uh, Clary. Any comments? I don't have anything. Um, I just want to commend the team for doing an excellent job. It really does look well thought out, and I can't wait to see it built. It's going to be such a change for that area. So kudos to all. And thanks. Uh, Reed? Yeah, um, I concur. Thanks for that presentation. That was a great presentation. Um, my, my question is, um, do you have a breakdown of the trees that will be removed and 
the proposed replacements just within the jurisdictional area. I don't think that what we were shown, I think it, it, it was showing all the tree removal for the whole project, including ones outside the jurisdictional area. So I just want to make sure that there is the appropriate replacement of trees within our jurisdictional area. Right. Um, Dan, do you mind flipping back to the yep. summary yep, slide? I don't have the numbers on hand, but we could just count them here. So I know within the jurisdictional area, actually go to the next slide. So within the jurisdictional area, there are six trees to be removed. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, six. Uh, go to the next slide, Dan. Uh, oh, sorry. Next one after that. And so planting in the jurisdictional area, six, seven, eight, nine. I got 35. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that seems to be more than enough. Um, so that's great. And just, could you go back to the, um, the prior slide just, and just the, 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 the tree inventory one of which, so which ones are the ones that are being removed within the jurisdiction area? Um, so it would be the gray ones. And you see the, the, the column that is second from the right where it says a hundred foot. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the ones with the Y, so those are the ones with the Y are within the hundred foot uh, buffer, and the gray ones of those are the ones that are being. And are so the so it looks like there's some. Okay, so it's a Norway maple that's in fair condition. Okay. Um. So I guess yeah, it's just yeah, they're all non-natives or invasives. Um, yeah, are, there's sorry, just, except for the honey locust that you're removing. Yeah, there's that one honey locust, um, number uh, tree number 17, that is unfortunately like smack dab in the middle of the of the lobby of the building. So can I just see, can I just see where that is on the plan? Um, yeah, so 17, just no, just south of there. Sorry, so it's not the middle of the lobby, but it's that next big one. Yeah, right there, that okay. one by your cursor. Yeah, right there. It's and that, and the, you, you, there's just no way to, yeah, I guess, yeah, there's no way to save that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, got it. Okay. And sorry, final question. Just so the, the just can, is there a, a, just a, an inventory of just the trees that will be planted of those 35 trees? Um, so those are all natives and are, are from our tree list. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If I could add a, a comment uh, there to the commissioners, um, as we all know, I know um, of the a bit of a brouhaha about trees that happened over 945 South Street in the last few months. Um, and uh, the team here asked me, oh, shall we just focus the presentation on the jurisdictional area for you and sort of gray out the non-jurisdictional area, or should we treat the site as a whole? And and uh, yeah, I think the lessons learned out of that, and certainly the way we look at the site, is that you know we we're, we're you know take it as a whole. The art of hundred foot line is just an artificial line when it comes to uh, making the entire property look like it really fits into that neighborhood. As we know, that's all all a very heavily forested, uh, very mature deciduous tree neighborhood, and um, so we decided not to not to be very picky that way but we can definitely break down the uh inventory we have all the data so we can clearly show that portion that's within the concom's jurisdiction so that there's very clear what you're what you're approving uh you know legally and what you're uh you know uh, not approving but supporting uh, for the entire site yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, just so we could, we, that would be great, just so we can just confirm that it satisfies our tree policy. Anything else? Anything else? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, no, that's it. All right, um, Bill? Um, no comments, just thanks for a very interesting and uh, thorough presentation. Enjoyed it. Great. Fred? Um, 
First off, uh, I love the plant list. Uh, it You've got uh, two native viburnums and a uh, uh, dogwood and, and uh, sweet pepper bushes. A lot of, a lot of great uh, shrub, uh, native shrubs in there. Um, so three questions. One is, do you know how much higher the grade is going to be that you're building on in the back there, right adjacent to the waterway? And then second, is the water is the is the waterway going to become more permeable in the new after the construction? Is there going to be uh, is is there any change in that stone lining it, it, so that the water gets absorbed in any better way? Um, and then the third question was whether there's any thought of using the runoff from the uh, paved areas um for the tr for the benefit of the trees and the shrubs on the edges of the parking area um I, Dan, i don't know if you want me to answer the question regarding the grading but um yeah so i was gonna i was gonna point to you uh tony if you can answer the grading yeah so um yeah, the grading, we're not really filling anything in the back. It's it's mostly matching existing. As you can see, there's like a 145 contour back there that we're kind of um, just maintaining and tying that into the building. So it, we're not really doing any filling along there. It's kind of all level at the, and at the same level as it is currently. Okay. Um, okay. And then oh. I... Besides the uh, the water reuse question, what was the other? Oh, I don't I don't believe we're touching the uh, we're not touching the 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 bank itself or doing anything with the channel. Okay. Uh, and and lastly, I think uh, you want us to see if we could use the runoffs for for irrigation, for example. That's we right. Had, we had no plans on on water reuse for that. Um, it's usually a costly endeavor, um, collecting the water and then with the pump pump systems and the storage required. Um, it, it, I, I don't know, Dan, I don't think it was in the scope of this project or in the budget. That, that's correct. Yeah, I was wondering about just more passive use, like I've seen I've seen uh, swales be uh, used on the edges of parking lots that that uh, are planted, um, and then use a portion of the runoff from the uh, from the pavement uh, that way. Um, I, I wasn't talking about a, a cistern to store the runoff and 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 then pump it for irrigation. More just uh, whether there's any passive uh, use of the water um, um, has been considered. Yeah. So it, it, is, it is a tight site with regards to the, um, the face of the building and Linden Street, but we do have a um, area on the south side where the building's set back with the, the, street, uh, the bank is kind of, the wetland line is kind of set back further to the east and we have some space between the um, the building and, and the south parking lot and we do show a little grass area that kind of leads to a catch basin that gets into the recharge system. But we weren't proposing anything for, for the uh, the parking lot itself. There's just not there's not enough space there for that. I, yeah, I it's, it's, it's yeah. okay. All right. Anything else, Fred? Nope. All right. Uh, Paulina. I don't have any comments or questions. Okay. Um, I echo everybody's uh, comments of, about a great presentation and a well well designed project. Uh, I I just have a couple of questions, uh, but first I I'll state uh, that there the town may have a future project in doing something with the uh, the armored channel behind the you know where the intermittent stream is, but I think that's that's out in the future, and uh, I think whatever happens there. I'm, I believe that the uh, housing authority would would be uh, supportive 
of that, but uh, I think it's kind of premature to say what exactly is going to happen out there. I think the town's trying to get a grant to do something there. Um, oh, my my real question is I, two questions. One is uh, with regard to stormwater, I did not see any information uh, re regarding where the groundwater is, uh, especially in uh, in relation to the uh, infiltration chambers, and so. I think that's an important piece of information that uh, that you know we we should see. Uh, I tried to look at the boring the boring uh, logs, but uh, the copy we got was you really couldn't read it, and maybe that information is on the boring log. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could submit the uh, you know the boring logs uh, in a different format that we could look at. And uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, th that's correct. It, it should have been in the drainage report, but it might be missing. But I did do some test bits out there. I did two deep hole tests, and um, one was adjacent to the um, the maintenance building, and I did another one um, in by the main parking lot currently. And um, both um, test bits yielded a, a very sandy material with a water seasonal high water table about six feet down, and I can certainly um, Submit that data if it's not included already in the, in the drain stormwater yeah, report. Yeah, that should be in the stormwater report. I'm sure the uh, the town engineer would would want mm -hmm. to see it. So, okay, my uh, my last question is, uh, and I think it's answered, but I just want to confirm it that uh, in the 25 foot zone, it doesn't look like there's going to be any construction activity, any uh, construction equipment uh, in that uh, in that zone. Is that correct? Yeah, I think there's a temporary um, work and the work is just to remove the existing encroachment, you know, prior to really the, the first thing in construction is we'll show, we, we show some uh, hay bales on the, on, the, on the erosion control plan. Then if you go back, we show um, two lines of hay bales and we show like an area um, that, that note on the bottom of the screen with the two liters, um, a little bit lower, right below it. That that shows where there um, there will be um, some restoration work that's being done um, temporarily. The dash line is like a temporary uh, erosion control line, just required for the demolition. And then once the demolition is gone and, and the um, area is stabilized, there will be a, a, a realignment of the um, erosion control. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I didn't notice that, but um, you, you'll fully restore any of the impacted area in the 25 foot zone, correct? Okay. Yeah, and if there's a little bit of a lag in between it stabilizing, we just go ahead and leave that erosion control in place and add a new row above it until it stabilizes. Okay, that's great. I have uh, no further questions. So let's, uh, let's go to the uh, public and see if there's any comments or questions from the public. There are currently no hands raised. Okay. It's, I thought there'd be more uh, more comments, but I'm I'm sure everybody's waiting for the planning board meeting. <laughs> so, uh, I guess if there's no uh, no further questions or comments, uh, we can continue this hearing. I guess we can continue it to our next meeting and uh, perhaps. We'd have an order of conditions ready. Uh, does that sound good, Deb? You got about 20, uh, yeah. 20 yeah. order of conditions to get together, right? Yeah, I know. It's okay. Yeah, we'll, we can talk about that. Um, all right. So, um, can we have a motion to continue this hearing for uh, 138, 188 Linden Street? To so moved. Second, second September 26th. Okay, yeah. uh, let's vote. Um, Sue, aye, Larry, aye, Reed, aye, Phil, no, aye, so uh, Fred, Fred, aye, Helena, aye, and the chair votes aye. Okay. So thank you, uh, Reg, and your team. Uh, thank you so much.
great presentation. And, Thank uh, you. It was wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned. We still have a few more uh, hurdles to clear. So, uh, but thank you so much for all the time you've spent in the last 15, 18 months. Um, I think it's all reflected in the plan we brought before you today, where we've uh, really considered everything that's important. Have a nice evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, We had, I guess we have two other uh, things on other business. We had a uh, a request or a minor or a modification on 40 Lake Drive. So we had before that 78 Elder Road request for a COC. Oh yeah, okay. So uh, did you have a chance to look at it? Is and we do have someone here to um to discuss that. Um, but essentially, a partial had been issued for all of the work. Um, the only remaining item was the monitoring period. Um, so of the ten trees that were installed, eight are in good condition. So they have met their um seventy five percent survival rate. So I would rec recommend issuing a complete certificate at this time. Okay, uh, is it Michael? Yes, thank yeah, you, Dave. Do you want to make a comment? Or... Uh, yeah. No, uh, if if Debbie you know agrees, I send in a report saying that all eight eight remaining out of the ten were still alive, and I'm I'm good with that. If we could close it out, that'd be great. Okay, uh, any other commissioners have a comment? Looks look pretty straightforward to me. I think so. It's been almost three years at this point and should be good. Yep. Okay. So uh, there's no other comments. Uh, can I have a motion to uh, issue a certificate of compliance for 78 Elder Road DEP file 234-880? Motion. Second. Okay. Let's vote. Sue? Aye. Clary? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Um, Fred? Aye. Lena? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, great. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Dave. Um, okay, so then it's not listed on the agenda, but it, I guess it came in uh, after the agenda was prepared. But you sent around the information uh, for 48 Lake Drive. It was a. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I sent you an updated agenda. Well, um, whatever. whatever. I think I think we're okay if we. Uh, 48 Lake Drive. There was a request to uh, install a patio, a small patio that was. Uh, I guess there was all a original patio. Originally there was a patio, and they removed it. Now they want to put it back in. So. Uh, Yep. So mm -hmm. there is um the contractor is is here, Armal. Armal, do you want to uh, do you have a little sketch of it or uh... Clay probably do you have a plan, Clay? I don't know. Is any, any of the commissioners want to see the sketch? Again, this is another like a minor thing. It looks pretty straightforward. Um, but if any of the commissioners want to see well uh, Clay's gonna put it up, yeah. Yep. So pretty much it directly in the middle of the of the plan. That's the area that they're um, that they're going to be installing the um, patio. And this is a minor request or a minor modification. Yes. Okay. Anybody have any comments? No. All right. So. Uh, can I have a motion to accept the minor modification request for 40 Lake Drive? Motion to accept. Second. Okay, let's vote Sue. Aye. Larry. Aye. Uh, Reed. Aye. Bill. Aye. Fred. 
Fred? Oh, he's muted. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, I. I, I read your lips there. And now, uh, Polina? Aye. And sure, votes on. Okay. So that concludes our. That was amazing. What about, the, is there 53 Heather Lane? Is there something there? No. I, so that's, that's being continued, uh, okay. essentially. Yeah, well, the, we can't close the hearing. They want a certificate of compliance, but they don't want us to go on site. And so we requested that they hire somebody and submit a report. Um, and until we, until I we just get on the list. Excuse me? I just saw it on the list. That's why I Yeah, asked. and, you know, until we get the report, we're not going to act on it. Right. Joyce Hastings is going to work on the report. Yeah. Okay. So um, other than that, I've uh, got a few comments on our uh, regulation update. You know, this was our uh, deadline. So uh, I uh, will, I'll take all the comments and, you know, put them in one, uh, one package and, uh, you know, Reed and I, Reed and I were going to kind of clean everything up and, uh, present something to the uh, commission for uh, further review. So, if anybody wants to slip in some comments, you know, if they're late, that's okay too. But uh, anyway, I I know everybody's been so busy, especially Deb. Uh, Thank uh, you, Clay. <laughs> I, I have a question, Dave. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I wasn't sure where you guys. I couldn't see other people's comments. I didn't know where. This was saved. It wasn't in the drop boxes that oh. Deb puts it. Is it, it, is oh, it somewhere? Yeah. Did I miss it? Maybe it was like buried in my emails. It might have like there were two, two or three different uh, 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 comment uh, documents. Hmm. You know, one, one that I did. One that Reed did. Just the other day, I put Reed's and mine together, and then I got a couple email comments from uh, from Bill and from Fred. And I was going to put those into the document and then send it to Deb so she could distribute it. So yeah. uh, where, but where can I access those? Or, or they're just comments somebody did and they just, I thought for some reason, I thought it was like a shared document. No, we, we, we can't do that. I, I ah, gotcha. Okay. It would be the ideal way to do it. Uh, I guess, uh, according to, oh, and I did check into this that you can't do that in, in, in the context of the open meeting law. So, okay. Uh, you know, um, Sue, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, before we just get the regulations, I just had a quick question. I didn't have a chance to raise my hand on Fifty Four Pleasant Landing. Just a quick question. Um, I know Fred had asked um uh, the uh, additional. Uh, it, it resulted in a hundred square feet of additional impervious. Um, my question is with the stormwater um bylaw, um. That's not greater than twenty five percent, for instance, is it? No, that no. wouldn't. That wouldn't fall under that. No, I think it's kind of no. Yeah. It's kind of what? De minimus. You know. It's, it's, okay. All right. That's all. Shouldn't too small. And I have my regulations at the table. Okay. Well, whatever you got, send it in, and you know, this is not a simple thing that we're trying to do. So I, I want to apologize for the Dropbox situation that, um, yeah, I kind of made a mess of it. So I think what we're going to do going forward, Elisa did start putting um, on our website um, all the, the filing information we're getting for each um, hearing. So I think we're just going to end up putting everything there and then you can just go to the website and look at what you want um, before the meeting. So right now it only has the four new filings up, but we're going to end up putting COCs and everything else up there that we get minor modification requests. So it's all in one place. Um, so I just want to let you know that for the next meeting, that's what we'll be, we'll be doing. Yeah, I it'll be website. Good. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. I think that that's what a lot of other towns are doing. Yeah, so we'll uh, yeah. we'll do that going forward. Fred, uh, excuse me, Reed, you have your hand up. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I just had one other point of business. Sorry, um, and I'm sort of unrelated, but um, 
when I when I came by to sign documents last week, I saw that I saw that like the the the, the wildflowers and everything along the reservoir had been mowed down already. Um, and I thought it, I thought it was very, very unusual that it would be this early. Um, I don't know if we have any say into the timing of that. Um, but are you uh, talking about the hill? The um, yeah, along the hill. Yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's um it's kind of a constant back and forth with me and DPW about that slope um, because we do coordinate off because a lot of turtles lay their their eggs right on that slope. Yeah. Um. So I had asked them to wait till October to um to mow. And then when I came in, I saw that it was mowed. Yeah. And then well, even though there's also just like there's the, the area too along the um the the, the ramp um the mm -hmm. that where there's you know there's fragrant sumac and there's all sorts of native yep. that, and that would have been and so i don't know it's just no i i, I was I very, very disappointed <laughs> when i saw that as well yeah. and um sometimes dpw works with us sometimes they don't um, yeah. so anyway so sorry if, you know to put more on your plate but um oh no no i i guess at this point we can you know it's something to deal with next year but um or if there's, I don't know if there's other places in town that you know we can put pressure on them to to hold off on mowing. I don't know. I don't. I don't know um, the timing of other places that they're responsible for either. So. Mm hmm. They're usually pretty good with the um, fields up at Ridge Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, right. but yeah, no, I, I have, I have told them. So. All right. Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Larry, you have your hand up. Yes, um, I'm wondering if 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 it's my screen, but when I access the Dropbox, I only see two uh, folders, one for Agate and the other one for South Street. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Is that what I'm supposed to see? It I could have I been because I sent a link at the beginning that I thought had everything under it and then realized it didn't, and then files were hidden within folders. So I sent it out again later. So it may have been a different link that had everything under it than the okay, one that so, we're trying. So that, so, so we're I not guess... doing that anymore. Yeah. Okay. Gonna be yeah, on if you, if you click on the South Street, it has like the next one. Yeah, like the Russian doll thing. That, Thank uh, you. Okay. Did you like that? <laughs> Did that makes sense. The whole Russian doll thing. It, well, yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah you had a yeah. little uh, clip there. I really. <laughs> Every, everything's everything's going to be on the website, the town website. So, so for the um, for the regulations and the draft, where where are you going to host that? Where are you going to post it? Ultimately, we'll do it on the town website where we will have a consolidated, uh, uh, you know, list of comments and we'll put it up there and then we can discuss it at our hearing or our open meeting. Okay. Maybe I, the first I time maybe... in the... All right. Sorry? Let's... I said maybe the first time when everything's uploaded, you could send out an email to all of us, um, just letting us know to check the website. Elisa is going to do mm -hmm. even better than that. She's going to email you with the link. Oh, oh, that's great. That's so, great. yes. Yeah, I had a really hard time trying to put comments on the side. And then I tried to access the document again, and I gave up. What, but, for, a, um, for the regulations? Mm-hmm. Well, you could just... You know, I feel like that's an Adobe thing. But, well, yeah. we, there, we do have a, a, a Word document of that uh, file. I could send it to you if you, if you want. Sure. That would we be can't, great. I'm sorry? We get person over, over these regulations, right? We get what? We can't meet in person over these regulations, right? Well, I mean, like one or two people could talk. You know, I think that's acceptable under the open meeting law. But uh, I, I would say in general that uh, when we deliberate about something, it should be in an open meeting and, you know, shouldn't it shouldn't mm -hmm. be private. So, uh, yeah, yeah I guess as long as there's not a quorum, right? Well, I think if you read our little uh, 
our uh, code of conduct that even uh, restricts it even further. But I would say in general, uh, you know, we we should not deliberate uh, amongst ourselves outside of a meeting, but I think it's okay to ask questions. And, uh, you know, if, if you had a question about something or whatever, you could call me or Deb or any of the other uh, commissioners. Uh, just, you know, don't do any serial, uh, you know, serial uh, communication, which is, you know, you go to one person, then to the next, then to the next. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, anybody that's worked in a corporate environment know, knows that these days the state of the art is you have a document online and everybody uh, comments on it, but uh, we can't do that. And, uh, you know, so the, the the correct way to do it is any comments you have, send it to Deb and, you know, Deb would, uh, you know, distribute them. But uh, I think what the plan is, and, you know, if, feel free to comment on it. The plan is that once we get all the comments, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put them on one document and then uh, Reed and I, we're gonna get together and kind of clean everything up and uh, get one final document to uh, then present to the committee commissioners at a meeting and then we can talk, you know, and that might take more than one meeting to come to some conclusion as to what we wanna do. And then once we decide on what we want to do, then we have to notice and uh, have a, a, a hearing with that uh, subject specifically uh, specifically listed. And I'm assuming that all the changes need to be highlighted in one single document. So what is replacing the new? Absolutely. Yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah. No. Okay. And then does it go? The select board? Um, Does it, no, um, they, no. It doesn't have I'll go to the select board. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. if you read if you read the if you read the um, wetlands bylaw, it specifically enables the conservation commission to promulgate, create and promulgate regulations. Okay. So okay. that's it. that's the authority. The bylaws the other story okay. that needs to go to town meeting. Yeah. Like, and if you read the wetlands bylaw, it specifically says that the select board, after a public hearing, can issue uh, regulations. But it, but it says that the Conservation Commission can issue its own regulations. Okay. You know, so we can do what we want. Well, I mean, I'd say once we finalize what we want to do, then I think we'll have the town attorney take a look at it to make sure that we're not, you know, <laughs> doing anything stupid. Uh, mm -hmm. And then then I think uh, we can move forward. Okay. So I got one final thing to uh, mention, and, and that is uh, that, uh, like, Deb and I, and at one point, Clay, uh, were on this uh, ad hoc trails committee uh, that we met with uh, people from the uh, park and rec department. And uh, I don't know if you remember that like last year, I was kind of interested in putting together a uh, community preservation uh, committee uh, application to do something with trails. And, you know, the conservation commission has done this in the past uh, to get some money funding from the community preservation committee under the community preservation act to, uh, to make some improvements in the trails. And so one of the things we had talked about was, uh, you know, creating a town-wide uh, program of science, trail science, and improving uh, kiosks and, and various signs. And uh, this was recommended way back in 2008 when the town did a, a master plan for, um, for trails. And so uh, I thought it would be, uh, I'm also on the, the community preservation committee as, as the representative for the Conservation Commission. And I thought it would be you know, appropriate this time around to uh, put in a uh, application, which is due November 1st. And so I put together an application and uh, Deb and, uh, and the uh, director of planning had reviewed it. And uh, 
it wasn't that detailed, but I've since developed some more details with a, you know, a specific plan to improve the uh, the signage. And this would be sponsored by the Conservation Department and Conservation Commission, and hopefully co-sponsored by the Park and Rec Department. So, so it would include all town wide. That's what yeah. was going to be the question. So, Park and Rec would be involved with this too. It, it would be town wide with the trails. Yeah, there's like nine sites. Two of the sites, the big sites, yeah. are you know Ridge Hill and uh, and the town forest. But yeah, yeah there's there's nine. We're creating standardized signage. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm We're and I'm using properties. I'm using the 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 system that the uh, trustees of the reservation uses because I do a lot of work with them and I'm quite familiar with what they're doing. So I I think we it's a good program and uh, I want to review it with the conservation commission uh, because uh, you know I want the conservation commission to sponsor it and uh, also I mentioned you know before we uh, open the meeting that. Uh, you know, Deb and I were going to go to the uh, uh, Park and Rec Commission and get them on board. You know, they were supposed to be uh, running this whole thing, but, you know, I guess they're too busy. To do that. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. <laughs> yeah, well, it's fine. I'm at, like, I'm into, I'm into the trails thing. So, uh, you yeah, know, so we got, we got a plan, which, you know, maybe next meeting or, or, uh, it's got to be before November first uh, that I'll, I'll present it to you all and you know see what input you might have. So that's all. Super. Thank you. Um. So we had two sets of minutes that I know oh, yeah, I did, that. Mm -hmm. um, comments on. If we can just vote on those, would be good. I was uptight. I thought this meeting was going to go to like ten o'clock or something. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Good work. All right. So um, there are minutes for um, one six twenty two and six and eight twenty two twenty four. So there's no comments. Could I have a motion to accept the minutes of one six twenty two and eight twenty two twenty four? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Sue? Aye. Larry? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Fred? Aye. Alina? Aye. And a chair votes aye. Okay, so if there's no other uh, business or um, comments, let's close the meeting. Uh, Motion to close. Good we it's second. just stop. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carried. <laughs> Thank you. Have Thank a good you. night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. And, uh, Bye. Enjoy the fall. Yeah. <laughs> Take care.